Good morning, everybody. So today, what we're going to do, to do today is, uh, first of all, uh, to finish the, the last set of slides that we have seen on Thursday, because we were missing dates. And then we will start an exercise, and then we will continue to speak, speak more about functions, um, and functional methods, and then we will start speaking about asynchronous programming that is a characteristic of JavaScript, uh, a very fundamental characteristic of JavaScript, and then we will also continue speaking about asynchronous programming next week. Mm -hmm. So just as a reminder, on Thursday we will have, you will have the first lab mm, in the two slots in room 5i uh, with the alphabetical division that it's in the introductory slide um, and the laboratory will be all individual labs so you will have uh, an exercise that will be put online soon and you will need to to complete this exercise we will have uh, you will have a, a teacher in the room and you will have also a former student of this course in the room to help further with the exercise and for this week the exercise will be on all the things that we have seen up to today included. So you will build something in a, a project, you start building a project that we will continue along the entire course and then we will further develop in React and we will build it step by step until the end of the semester. So dates. Uh, but quickly on dates. Dates is a, a native object in JavaScript uh, that's called date and it represents um, a time instant in mil with millisecond precision since epoch. Um, and it's called date and you can build a date with a year and uh, with a year, month, day, uh, hour, minute, second, etc. Um, but most methods around dates work with the local time zone. So if you need to switch time zone, it's uh, challenging. And also the formatting of dates is dependent on where you are or where the computer is set in the time zone and also it's implementation dependent. And so even if you set through the date object the proper time zone or the proper language country that you want to use, it behaves differently according to the implementation. So for instance, if you set a locale through the date object as ENCA in Firefox, uh, you will see the date formatted as year minus month minus day. Uh, in Safari, for instance, you will get the same result. But in Chrome, in Chrome, no. In Chrome, you will get day, month, year. Mm? So if the same code will work differently according uh, to different implementation. Mm? So dates, it's, it's a built-in object, but uh, it has some problem, actually, that is not easy to solve. So it's, it's easy to use date for very, very small things, uh, but again, formatting is locale, implementation is, is, is implementation dependent, and uh, setting UTC or local time zone sometimes is confusing. Comparison is dif difficult, there is no way in which you can do an explicit comparison with the data object. So it exists, but in practice, uh, is not used seriously, it's just used for small things and what typically it's used for more serious data time handling is some external libraries. Mm -hmm. And here in the slide there are, there are five of them. Um, we choose in this course the first one, the one with the star, it's called DJS. Uh, because it's small and it does all the things that we we need to do, but there are also other moments. JS is one historical, but sort of abandoned in this moment. And then there is also date FNS, that is a library for ending data that only uses functional method. Mm -hmm. But and then there are others clearly, but this DJS is small and does everything that we, we need to do, we need to use for, and it's also extensible. You can have plugins to do more things. In this DJS, it works in React, it works in JavaScript in the browser, and works in Node.js. So it's 
is, is very, very good for, for our purpose. So we choose that. And these libraries, all of these, overcome the problem that date, the date object, the native date object has. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, um, well, uh, DJS, how do you install? We will see uh, it in a moment, uh, but it's also here in the slide. I will explain more this part while we, we do it. We do it. Um, I said work with everything and all objects are immutable. Mm -hmm. So all the objects that modify a date actually return a new date. Don't modify the date in place. Uh, again, plugins and localization ready. And you can see here a few things. Then there is the documentation for all the various methods that you can, can have. So you can, for instance, get the current date hmm, with the function DJS hmm, that gives you the current date. Hmm. Uh, but you can also format the date in various format. Hmm. So this is the ISO 8601 format, um, here, month, uh, day, time, and the hour in 24 hours, the eight digit. You can also build a new object, build a DJS object starting from a date object from JavaScript. You can also generate the current date from a Unix timestamp. You can parse it from uh, a different various, various way to build a date. And by default, DJS parses in local time. So whatever you put it is parse it according to the local time. Um, and you can also decide how to format, hmm? not only to parse the date to build an object, but also to print date if you want. So you can format in you know, f f some formats like this with the, the time zone, but also decide that you want to just have, I don't know, the year, the month, and then some other words before the dates, and it will print that way, and it also has a two string methods that will print uh, the date in a longer format with the day of the week in which uh, it happens and with the time zone uh, associated. Mm -hmm. So again, you have flexibility in how to build a date, from which object you want to start and build a date and store the date and do operational dates, and also do you want to format it. And you can also set date, get the minutes, uh, get the month, a lot of options and you can also compare dates. You can add, you can start from a current date and say, I want to add one month. I want to add three days. I want to add two weeks from that date and get the results. Or you can also subtract. I want to start from today and say, which day was 33 days ago? And that's do the computation for you. And again, you can also have methods to comparison like is before, is after, is between to check if a here is a leap year or not and so all the things that you can imagine working on dates and comparing dates uh, it's it's included in in the JS and also as I said before there are plugins to install if you want to extend the capability of the JS and that are provided by the library but should be implicitly explicitly installed and used um, and this is DJS. So let's have a look at DJS in practice with, uh, well, this is the website of DJS and here you have the documentation. Uh, this is zoom out for, for you, especially for the one in the back of the room. If you open it on a computer, it should probably, um, with 100% zoom, it should be probably look slightly different from that. Um, but again, it tell you how to install it and you can see, for instance, that, I don't know, um, here there is all the instruction for formatting with the various options to format a date, whatever you basically want. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is also advanced formatting in addition to all of these things in this table. So again, a lot of flexibility. We are going to, to use it. Um, now and it's also tell you how to install in node in the browser uh, etc mm -hmm. so uh, let's have a look at this exercise that we'll we'll do uh, later on but let's use this to build to install a date the DJS and to use it so what is telling us to do this exercise uh, that is on github already 
so the goal of this exercise is managing a simple data structure as an array of objects, so things that we have seen uh, last week. And the idea is to try to handle a question and answer website, like we, we did last, last week for the other exercise. But this time using JavaScript object and functional programming that we are going to see later on today. Uh, so in particular, we will have to represent two objects. One is the answer and the other one is the question. Uh, each answer will have some properties the text of the response, the text of the answer, who is the person who inserted the answer, the score that is associated to that answer, hmm? it could be again negative or positive, an integer number, and the date in which the answer is inserted. Hmm? And then the exercise asks to define a construction function, as we have seen last time, and then to represent the questions that instead is made of the text of the question, the name of the person that created the question, again, the date of insertion, and a list of all the answers that are associated to that question. Hmm? And it asks you to define a construction function to represent this question, and also to implement some methods within the construction function of the questions to do a bunch of things, including adding an answer to a question, find the answer, of a given person or find all the answer after a certain date or list all the answers sorted by date and list all the answers sorted by score, decreasing score. Hmm? And finally say create an instance of questions with at least four answers in it. Hmm? So the first things that we, so is it clear, right? The exercise, Not, nothing really complicated understand is it no yes yes um, so the first things we need to do is uh, I open a folder hmm, in which there is the text of exercise so first things create an empty folder pick a folder in your computer and open a folder in Visual Studio Code hmm? because to install things we first need to create a project within the folder that we have open it. Hmm? So we are going to do two things. One is create a project and second install the libraries that we need, in this case only DJS, within that project. So that if I move the project from my computer to your computer, hmm, you can reinstall exactly the same version of the library that I am using. Hmm? So the library is local to the folder, to the project, to the specific project. So we are going to open a terminal. Within the folder, within the project, and the first things that we are going to do is npm init. So npm is stand for uh, Node Package Manager, and it's a, uh, a program that is installed together with Node.js, and it's useful for handling all the dependencies, all the packages that you need in your project. So all the installation of the library, all the removal of the libraries, and also the setting of the project, like the initialization in this case. And um, it will allow to install and remove libraries either at the operating system level, so that you can install something for all the programs in your computer or at the local level that is the default hmm? so within the folder so when you want to create a project and for instance react will do it automatically when you create a react project but it will do this and we're going to do this manually now it's the first thing is to say npm init hmm? to initialize the project and it's a utility that step by step will tell you will ask you a few information so the first information that we'll ask you is uh, the name of the package hmm, in which the program is contained. Hmm. The idea of this is that you can create a library, create a program, and then release it. So you need to provide information about what is in the, pro in the folder. Hmm. And by default, it gets the name of the folder. So this folder was called the week 
zero two and the, the default name is week zero two. So I'm going to accept this and press enter. Then it asks you for a version. By default is 1.0.0. Uh, we can use 0 0.0.1. And we need to use the three things, hmm? the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary uh, versioning. Hmm? This is called semantic, semantic versioning. Uh, defined that way, we can say 001 because it's really uh, the starting description. Any description you can want by default is nothing. We can say um, exercise for week two um, on functional programming <coughs> methods, functional methods. And then the entry point. Hmm? So the file, the main file of your project, the one that you are expected to run when the project is, is run. Hmm? By default is called index.js. You can use whatever name you want. Uh, since we are doing just one exercise, we can use exercise.js. And that's the entry point that's expected to be in this project. And any test command, we can skip this. Any Git repository that is associated to this project, we can, in this case, skip this. Any keywords to better find the, the project on some search engine, etc. Again, in this case, we can skip it. The author, I can put myself as the author. It's just a string. And the license, uh, the open source license. So this is encouraging you to add a license that by default is this ISC that stands for Internet System Consortium License that is a permissive open source license. Um, and we can keep the default one. It's not really important at this moment. And then show you hmm, your decision. And if this is OK, you can either type yes or press enter or write no and change the information. So what is operation did? This operation created one file that's called package.json. So all the libraries, all the projects you will see in Node.js and in JavaScript, like React, will have this file, this package.json file. And this file, will, well, for now, it just contains the information we inserted. So you can also edit this information if you want. It's exactly the things that we inserted reported here. And in this file, npm will list all the dependencies of the project we are going to install. So now we know that we need the JS. So we are going to write npm install the name of the library to install. In this case, DJS. And npm install also support, you know, you want to install a specific version of DJS or the latest one. And in this case, we are going to install the latest one. Um, and you can press enter. Uh, if you want, there is a, a shortcut for this that is called npm i library. So npm i stay for install. It's the same. You can write npm install djs or whatever you want to install or npm i whatever you want to install. So in this case, djs is very, very small. You need an internet connection to install the library. It's downloaded and installed in locally in the project. That means that from another folder, you cannot use this library. You need to install it again in another folder. Uh, if you want to install things globally, you can write install minus G and the name of the library. Minus G install things globally if you have the permission to install things globally on the operating system. Um, OK, which are the results of this operation? Uh, you see that we have two new files, one file, a new file, and a folder. Hmm? So let's have a look at the package.json first. You can see that in the package.json, something new appeared. This dependency object in which there is the library we installed. DJS 
in version 1.1.7. So again, if I pick this folder and give it to you, you can write npm install and npm will read this file and install all the dependencies that are listed here with their dependencies. So npm install name of the library will install the specific library. If you have a project with a package of JSON and write npm install with install everything that is listed here under dependencies. And this is one change, it's automatically done. So if you remove from npm the dependency here, it will be removed. And then, so if you release this, if you put this online, like we did for the exercise, you have to include this file. And you have to include also the package, .lock, the package lock JSON. That is another version of that file with just more information. More information, for instance, where they get the library or the integrity in this case. Or in this case, we don't, but if the AJS had a dependency, depend from another library, that dependency would be listed here. All the three of dependencies of the single library that you installed will be listed here. In this case, the JS is very, very simple, just uh, there's no dependencies with other libraries. But if you say npm install React, you will wait 10 minutes and you will see a very long file here, even if you install one single library. Because here in the page, package lock, you will get all the, the dependencies of the library that you installed. So this file also needs to be released, and need to be delivered. If you put this online or we need to, to share this for, uh, you know, the exam, for instance. So you need to include package lock and package.json. And instead, the folder here that's called node modules should not released, should remain locally on your computer. Because this folder, node modules, actually contains all the libraries you installed, the source code of all the libraries you installed. Hmm? So here you see there is a folder DJS, and if you open it, there is the actual source code of DJS. Hmm? So uh, with its own package.json, clearly. And here you can see, for instance, that, hmm? well, this is the mini, minified version of the JS, but there is all the JavaScript code of the JS. Mini, minified, so without spaces, without new lines, without anything, just, this is not readable for us, but in this case it's shorter, it's smaller for consumption, for downloading. Because again, a computer, you know, a computer doesn't need space to understand which is a function, its end, or what's the variable, it's, it uses other things. Um, like semicolon. Hmm? So in these node modules, you will find all the libraries you install. Again, in this case, we have just one. And this is local and to your computer. Hmm? So if there are maybe some path, there will be some path that are local to my computer. And if we'll, if we'll have some uh, things that needs to be compiled, they will be compiled for the hardware architecture or my computer. So I cannot, this folder shouldn't be given to another person. Otherwise, if you receive a project with the node modules, you have to delete the node modules and do npm install again. So just to, to understand, when you start from scratch, you will have something like this. So without the node modules, and if you want to recreate the node modules, you can just write npm install. And npm install will read the package of JSON, the package lock, and will recreate the folder for your computer with the exact version of the library that is uh, present in the package JSON file. Is this clear? Hmm? We don't have slides for this, but it's operational information that we will need. So when you will create a new project, you will do npm init, create a project, and then npm install some things to bring libraries in your project. Hmm? So just two commands to rem remember, npm init and npm install. 
Okay, so we can now create the exercise.json file, that is the entry point we, we said, and and we can start at least um, the, oh, we can see maybe not, not really starting the exercise, but we can play a little with the JS, for instance. So, um, which is the first things we need to write? Use strict. Uh, then let's use the JS. So let's create a const, uh, let's call it current date, and let's write the JS. So DJS written in this way will give you the current date. So now, the current date, the current hour, the current minutes, the current second when the program is executed. So we can print console.log current date and we run this node exercise. We get an error. Oh yes, that's true. Um, because we use the JS, but we didn't import them. Hmm? So we installed the library, but we need to import the library clearly to use it, like in any other language. And um, pay attention to this because the official way in JavaScript to import libraries is import keyword import something. That is a standard way. So in the browser, when we'll need to import something, we will write import the JS, etc. But here in Node.js, they use another way to do this that, that was born before the standard way to importing. And they are still keeping the other way of importing things in Node.js. The standard import is experimental in Node, so it needs to be enabled manually. So we are going to use the, stand, the, the previous, let's say, the, the default way in Node.js to import things. That is defining a variable that typically is called like the library that you want to call the use and write require DJS. Hmm? So you define a library, uh, you define a variable, const typically, because you don't change the library, and then require hmm, the, the, the library you installed. In this case, we installed DJS and the library is called DJS. Hmm? And here, Visual Studio Code tell you that this is a common JS module. That is the proper name of this. This require is called the common JS module. Uh, it can be converted to an ES module, so it's a normal standard JavaScript module. Mm -hmm. But again, it won't work by default in um, Node.js. So we cannot do the conversion. And this also means that when we, we will work in the browser, we will write import something. And here in nodes, we rewrite require something, hmm? just to keep in mind this difference. So, because again, Node.js support this, but in an experimental way. So we need to import the library and then we can use it. Hmm? So let's save this and run this. Okay. So if we save this and run this, just console log of the object. So you see that the object by default doesn't have in this format a uh, to string. So we see the representation of the object. The, let's say the raw representation of the object. So, and here you have all the details. Here, month, day, week of the month, hour, minutes, second, millisecond, and a long representation of the date in a string format and the language that's by default is English. 
So, what, what do you notice? You should notice at least two things if you look carefully. Two things that are wrong. It's one hour before, so it's not 8.50 uh, now, but it's, um, sorry, it's not 8.06, but it's 9. It was 9.06. That's the first thing. And the other thing? The month. The month is not 2. So actually, here the month is correct, right? Because it's 3, that is March. But here the month is 2. Okay, why? It starts from zero, exactly. That field starts from zero. So January is zero, February is one, March is two, etc. So in this representation, the month, so if you read this representation, the month is start from zero. But when it's printed, it's printed correctly. So DJS memorize things starting from zero for the month, not for the other elements, clearly. Um, well, not clearly, but apparently. Uh, they have these choices, uh, but when they represent it in a string format, they will pick the month in the correct way. Mm. So, if you look at this, keep in mind that it is zero based, but then it will be printed starting from one. Mm. So it will print correctly. And why one hour later, uh, before? English time. Uh, English time. What is English time? It's UTC time, yes. It's, yes, British time is, yeah, now is UTC, but in the summer is UTC plus one. Um, so this is UTC time, mm? the green witch time, UTC. Mm? And this is the Z here say that is UTC. Mm? So the representation start from local time, because we, we saved the DJS in our time. In my computer is on the Italian time zone. Mm? So the central, in this moment, the central European time zone. Um, but then is stored in UTC. So in our case, one hour uh, before. This means that when you create a date, we can do it. If we create just a date explicitly, like um, um, 2023, 03, today is 7, when we just create a date without the time, hmm? so DJS without nothing is the current moment in time, including our minutes, second, and millisecond. But we can create a date. Hmm? We have seen that DJS is able to parse date in, from various formats, so this is one legit format to parse date here, month, day. Hmm? So without hours. When you do this, what do we expect to see here? And then we can run it, but... Do you expect to see the 7th of March? Or do you expect to see the 6th of March? Or the 8th of March? Or another day of March? Knowing that the time stored is one hour before our time. Guesses. It will tell the previous day because it will consider that we are at the local zero zero zero. Exactly. It will be the sixth of March because twenty twenty three zero three zero seven without time it will be zero 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 zero. So midnight, nine, nine hours ago, more or less. And so moving one hour before, it will write 2023-03-06, that it was yesterday, at 11 p.m. Because one hour before midnight. So in this case, we will have here the representation one hour before. So keep in mind this if you don't, we, we are not doing heavy conversion of local time zone, etc. But keep this in mind if you operate with dates that the representation of the JS is one hour before. And so if we don't put 
an hour, it will be midnight, so it will be 11 the day before. 11 p.m. the day before. So we can, we have to, to test it. And here you can see that is 23.00 of yesterday. And clear here, the hour, the minutes, and the second are the correct one, and the day is the correct one, and the month is still counting from zero. So internally, the JS know which is the current time zone, the current time, the current hour, but in this, by default, printed representation, it will just use GMT, hmm? so UTC time, always. Okay? So dates and times are one of the most complicated things to handle with because we have a lot of time zones and a lot of formats and it's always complicated, but um, we, we can just keep this in mind. And then there are methods to convert from one time zone to another if you need it, it etc. But uh, or set a locale specifically, but by default it behaves in this way. Okay? Any questions? Doubts? Nothing. Okay. So let's try to do a bit of this exercise. Let's start the exercise for which with the things that we know. Uh, so this exercise is asking us to create answer and questions, right? So let's start from answer. Answer with text name, score and date for elements. what we are going to write. We need to create a, fun a construction function called answer. So, what I'm writing here, how do we create a construction function? Nobody? Yes. Yes, and the parameters that are uh, text, name, date, and score. Okay. So function is correct. Function the name of the fun of the object we want to create with the capital letter. So answer. And then the parameters. Hmm? So the parameters are, if we read that in order, text, name, score, and date. Hmm? Text, name, score, and date. And then, in the body of the function, what we're going to write. These dot parameters, yes. This dot text equal text. Let's let's do this and this dot name and this dot score and this dot date. So here we have uh, two choices to make. Um, so tell me which, which are the things you prefer. We have one choice for score and one choice for date. So the choice for score. Uh, so when we create uh, um, an answer, hmm, so let's say that answer will receive a score from another person. So you have a web application in which you have questions and answer and another person can say plus one in, a, in an answer of another person. So you add a score. So when you create an answer, you don't have a score because the score is something that other people add to you, right? So we can define a default score. That is the one that is used when we create the, the, the answer. 
that will be zero. Okay, and do you remember how we define a default element in a parameter? Lo louder? Equal zero. So score equals zero. And, and this is correct, right in this way. Um, I will move this parameter to the end of the parameters. Why? I'm going to move this, so this is correct, this is working. But I'm going to move this to the end, after date, like this. Why? Which problem? So otherwise there are problems when we create the, date, the, the answer. Uh, because if we don't put anything in that slot, it will assign the value to date. So if we uh, keep these, these things here, and we want to use the default parameter, we will create an answer with some text, comma, the name of the author, and if we write the date there, because we want to use zero, the date will be associated to score. That is not something that we want. Hmm? So, if we keep this in this position and we don't want to set a score, we need to write the text, the name, undefined, and the date. Hmm? So, we avoid to write a zero, but we write undefined, so not a big win. Mm. So what we can do instead is to put it at the end, mm. so that we can just skip the parameter. We can write text, name, date, and close parentheses. And since there is no other value that will be automatically undefined, that will be automatically zero in this case. Okay, so we are going to put it in the end. And the other choice that we the choice we need to, to, to take now is date. We know that we want a DJS object. But in this moment, we are not making any assumption on date. So the choice is, we keep date as it is now, or, and meaning that we expect here this date to be a DJS object, or we expect this date to be a string and convert here in the JS. So option one is keep everything like this. And when using answer, we will write string, string, DJS, nothing or an integer. When we'll create an object. The other option is to keep this like this and write something like this. So storing the DJS within the object instead of converting the DJS while creating the object. Which, which option do you prefer? This one? Okay, so let's keep this one. Sorry? Oh, yes, but that's, that's nothing we can, I mean, we should live with it. So yes, we will have, still always have, if we put the date in midnight, let's say hours, we'll get the stored the day before in the representation, actually not stored, because you see, it's not storing, what is the day? It's not storing the day before. It's storing the current date, it's just printing the day before, okay? So it's currently stored, but, but yes, that is um, something that we need to keep in mind. Hmm? We can convert everything in, in a specific locality, but it's more work than, than needed in this moment. Okay, and uh, uh, we need to do the same for questions, right? So function, question, and the parameter are text, name, date, and list and answer. Text, name, date, and then we don't put the list of answer in the parameters because when you create a, a question, you will not have the answer yet. The answer will come la later. 
Mm. So this dot text, like before, equal text, this dot name equal name, and this dot date equal DJS. So we use the same uh, choice of before of date. And then we will need a list of answer. Then when we will build the object will be empty. When we create a question, we'll not yet have answers. Answer will be added after. Okay? So then the exercise is asking us to also set up some method within questions. And I see that some people are still writing, so I'm not switching screen, but the, the methods were going by memory add, uh, find, find all, um, a list by date, a list by score, and after date or something like that. So five or six methods. So, how do you, we create a method here? Do you remember? This dot add equal function. So in this case, we can use um, a narrow function. Okay, we can implement the add actually, right? So we can add an answer. So, how can we add an answer to the array of answers that we called answers? I called answers. Push. So, this dot answers dot push answer. Yes, bad choice of name. Answer. And that's it. So we can add things. And then we will do we need to do the same for this dot find or find all, I don't remember the name, but never mind. Um, and which we need to find the name and uh, etc. So we will continue after functional methods, but um, so the find, let's try to do the find in the, the normal way without function meter that we have not yet seen. So the find was saying, let's call the find all, returns all the answer of a given person. Return all the answer of a given person. How do we code, the, code this? Hmm? What is get answers? Uh, but we need to, to you know, so let's imagine that we have three answers, one, two for me, by me, and one by him. Okay, we need just to get the answer, my answer. Yeah, we can use four. So first things we need to, uh, create a um, found answer array or something like that. Found answer. And then we can use for. For const uh, a of these dot answers um, and so if a dot name triple equal name these dot found answers 
dot push uh, a and then return found answer. So if we found something, we get the list of answers. If we don't find anything, we just get an empty array. But this is the final. OK, so let's add a few uh, instances of these objects. Let's add a, a question and a few answers just to experiment with these methods. Hmm. So, uh, let's add the const question equal new question and we need the text, the name and the date, all strings, um, question. Is JavaScript better than Pick another language. Pick a better language. Python. And uh, who is asking the question? Me. And when I ask the question, uh, let's say that I ask this. Since we have the answer, and the answer doesn't make sense to be before or the same day of the question, let's say that I ask this question on uh, 2023 in February. Um, seven one month ago more or less and then let's create a few answer so first answer so now we, we are going to do everything manually but um, new answer and we can say yes and yes could be luca let's say yes and uh, the date uh, in which he said yes was 2023-02-15, for instance. So one week after my questions. And then we can have a second answer. New answer. And... Um, We can say not in a million here, and this could be by Guido Van Rossum, that is biased, but... And the date uh, could be 2023, 0, 3, 0, 2. And uh, we can have also another answer, and then we can stop it with the answer. Third answer. It could be new answer. It could be no. And um, by, by me, I'm answering myself. And I answer the same day of Guido Marosso, by chance. 230302. Hmm? And if we want, we can also add a score. It does make sense uh, to create an answer with a score, but the first one, uh, we can say that this could be minus 10, and this could be uh, instead uh, 5, and then could, the last one could be 0, so the default one, so that we can, can experiment, and then we need to add the answers. So, uh, question dot add first answer second answer and third answer and uh, and then we can do questions console log question And we can run it, run it. Okay, and we can see that again there is the raw representation of everything. 
So we can see that there is the question, is JavaScript better than Python, with the name, with the date, with the one hour before midnight, in the string representation, not in the, in the current uh, structure. And then there is a yes with a minus 10 and a date that is not visible here uh, in this representation, is actually uh, should be actually included. Um, it's truly not a string. And then there is not a million here with the space here that shouldn't be. And there is no. And then there is, well, printing the question object will also print the methods hmm? that the add and find all that are actually two functions. Hmm? And if we print just to see what happens, console.log uh, first answer, we see that the date is actually displayed entirely with the row structure. So here it wasn't because the object was already big and so the console just didn't show us something but existed and instead of printing only this single object we have everything. Okay? So any questions about this? Hmm? So we just started, we just did the things that we, uh, we have discussed last week, up to now, plus dates. Hmm? The just we converted one date in the other. Hmm? And build the methods that we are going to try after. This find all. Any doubts, questions? <coughs> no? For now? Okay, so if you don't have any questions, um, let's do a little bit of uh, speaking about functions and then we will go back to the exercise, well, then we will do a break and then we'll go back to the exercise. So this set of slides will be with us for two weeks, so this week and next week. So we are not going to do everything today. But today we are just giving the um, one definition and for now one definition and we are going to speak about functional methods. Uh, so the definition is the definition of callback that we already used last time with sort. So when we pass a function to the sort function, that is called a callback. So a callback is a function passed into another function as an argument. That is. And this callback is often invoked inside the function that receives it as an argument. And this callback could be of two types in JavaScript or in general. Synchronous and asynchronous. So here there is an example of a callback in which you define we are, again we, we did it we, we have seen this with sort but here's another example with all custom made functions you define a function is called log quote that just does console.log nothing fancy and then we have another function that is called create quote that receive a text quote and a callback any callback hmm? any function that you want to pass it and it create a quote like uh, like I always said quote hmm? so the variable passed here and then pass this uh, other variable to the callback that will do whatever the callback want to do hmm? so in this case we call create quote with web apps one rocks with the log quote callback function hmm? So here we will pass the string here and the callback will be this log quote. So the results of this will be like as we say web up one rocks. Hmm? So print it on screen because console log. So this is the idea. We have a function and that receives as one of the parameters another function whatever function it has and, and clearly this function should 
follow some rules. Mm? Clearly, my quote will always be a text. So that function should be able to handle text, for instance, strings, mm? not other things. So it should be a compatible function. But then if this function does console log or save on file or send it to uh, an HTTP address, all are possibility. It depends on the callback function to do things. And function could be synchronous or asynchronous. So sort is synchronous. The function of the slide before is synchronous. That means that it is executed in that moment. And if that moment means that the function needs three seconds to complete, the callback function needs three seconds to complete, your program is stuck for three seconds. Because you need three seconds to complete. Hmm? So for sort, we have seen last time that sort accepts a function that operates between couple pairs of elements and it should return minus the zero if it's in the right order or, uh, sorry, minus the zero if you need to switch order or more than, than zero, so like one, if instead it's in the right order. Hmm? And so it, it's able to sort things in this way, given a function. Clearly this function has a requisite, like being able to produce a number as a result. Because the sort work receiving a number from the callback. Hmm? And this is synchronous. Again, it's happening in the order you see it on the screen. And if, again, the callback needs three seconds to complete, you wait three seconds. And the program is blocked for three seconds. Hmm? Uh, another function that is synchronous callback is, for instance, filter. Filter is a functional method that we are going to see now that, as the name say, filter things. Hmm? Given some criteria, will give you the elements in an array that fulfill that criteria. Hmm? And also in this case, filter wants as parameter a function. That is the one that will give you the criteria to perform the filtering of the things. So, filter is one of the functions that JavaScript has in one of the methods that JavaScript has for functional programming. So, do you know what is functional programming? Moral, someone say more or less. Who's, who others say more or less? Okay, who say yes, I know what is functional programming? Who say no, I absolutely have no idea what is functional programming? Okay, who, what is functional programming? Since you said yes. <laughs> Passing functions to other functions? Mm, sort of, because also callback is, you know, uh, is passing function to other functions. So a property is like, uh, does it have side effects? I, I, and now I have to ask you what is a side effect, so. Exceptions. <laughs> Let, let's switch. Another definition. It's more or less. Uh, it's with programming. Uh, it's written, actually, but. More telling what to do instead of. Uh, it's programming more telling what to do, so defining functions instead of. Instead of. Okay, so, yes. Well, we are not going to go deep in functional programming because it's not our scope here, but it's, it's actually one of the paradigm that JavaScript has. So JavaScript implements the normal paradigm. JavaScript implements functional paradigm, programming, and also uh, implements sort of the object-oriented paradigm. It's not object-oriented. JavaScript is prototype-oriented. That's a difference. That's why objects behave in this way. Uh, but functional programming, briefly, is a programming paradigm where the developer try to construct and structure the code only, in theory, using functions. Hmm? So without loops, for instance. 
So again, it's not the main paradigm for JavaScript, but JavaScript has a, a, a bunch of methods to that. So it's a declarative style, uh, not imperative style like C, Java, etc. And as a result, it can improve program readability. Mm? So here you have the functional version of this, the red one. Mm? So there is an array and you want to filter an array according to a filter function. And here instead you loop into an array and check if the filter function return true or false and then you create another array with the elements you want to keep. Like we did for the find all, basically. Mm? So the find all we did is like this. We iterate on the array and we get if, in that case it wasn't a function, but if the um, the name is equal to the name that is passed to the parameter, we keep the name. We store the name in another function. That is normal imperative style. In the functional style, we will have a function that will do the checks for us. Hmm? So the idea is that you can structure all the program, most of the program, using functions, without using loops, without using other construct like this. And then there are features, like the one of the side effects that was mentioned, uh, features that are partially um, strongly linked to the programming language that you're using. So if the programming language doesn't consider function as first class citizen, you have trouble to implement functional programming. Um, and others that are instead properties of how you write code. So for instance, function must be first class citizen. And in this case, in JavaScript, we can do this because function can be used as anything else. We have seen, we can pass it as a parameter, we can get it from a function, we can add it as, as a, an object, because functions are object under the hood. So they are first class citizen in JavaScript. The function needs to be higher order. So uh, a function that operates on function, taking one or more function as argument and returning a function. It's everything, again, functions. Uh, you should also be able to compose function. Hmm? So putting function one after the other. Like the results of a function is passed to another function and the results of this is passed to another function, like creating a chain, this is the next point, a chain of functions. And starting from one data, you can chaining function to manipulate that data, that information, consequently. So these are the main four feature of functional programming, not, not all of them, but four of them. And JavaScript fulfill all of that. And, um, and JavaScript, again, support this feature out of the box, given that functions are objects, uh, mostly. And uh, functional programming also requires immutability, or better, avoiding mutability of data. Mm? So do not change object in place, but always return a copy of the object. Mm? So if you are changing an array, if you are sorting an array, if you are filtering an array, you return a new array will not change the original one, always. It's by definition. Functional programming will give you a copy of the things. It's not very many of the issues of this, uh, this approach, am I wrong? It's not very memory efficient, this approach. I can agree with that. But it's a style programming, it's a programming style. So if you want efficiency, well, if you want efficiency, probably you don't use JavaScript, but um, that's another story, but yes. Yes, giving copying of everything actually depends how things are then implemented or real, but yes, it's always giving a copy of the things. So in the end, you will have, if you do a lot of operation, you have a, a lot of copies in a certain moment, yes. So functions, methods, functional methods in JavaScript. Uh, we have seen that, for instance, for iterating over arrays, we can say for off, but there is also other there is also a functional method to do that, this is the for each. So process each element according to callback. It's a for, is iterating, but in a functional way. Uh, or you can have every or sum. So every check whether all element in, a call, in, a in an array satisfy a function, a Boolean function. It's all greater than one. It's all starting with A. And if it is, it will tell yes. 
some, it's the same thing, but instead of checking whether all of them, check some of them. And it's just iterator, so they don't change the array, just iterate on the array. Uh, and then there are iterators that returns a new array in a functional style that are map and filter, and filter is for filtering, and mapping is to building a new array, starting from an existing array, and actually changing the content, not just removing things like filter, but changing the properties, like moving from all uh, capital letter to all non-capital letters, for instance, or increasing by 100 all the numbers that you have. So changing the content of the array, not in place, but returning a new array. And then there is the reduce, that it's a more complex function um, to, as I said here, progressively compute a result. Mm? So if you want to calculate an average, you can do it with the reduce, for instance. Mm? And now, after the break, we're going to see all these methods one by one. Mm? So 20 minutes break, and then we will start on 10-10.